Today I'm marching for all the Marines and soldiers, uh, all the service members who lost their lives, uh, in particular Afghanistan most recently in Kabul. I'm rocking for HM2 Hernandez. Uh, today I'm rocking for everyone who didn't make it back. Today I'm walking for Sergeant Cook uh, and for all the people that we lost uh, while we were in service. Uh, today I'm actually marching for Sergeant Aguan, Specialist Flores, and Sergeant Chase Mantel. Today we're wrecking for Omar Ford. Today I'm uh, marching for Chris Stonesight, for Eric Alton, Ben News, Mike Newton, and of course the Harlem Hellfighters. Lost a lot of guys in World War I. We can't forget them. I have no illusions about what little I can add now to the silent testimony of those who gave their lives willingly for their country. Words are even more feeble on this Memorial Day but the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remembers those who were loved and who in return loved their countrymen enough to die for them. Yet we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them and with a vision that led them to battle and a final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has a cost. It imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so too must we in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves.